Hey, what's up, Zach here. And today I've got the all new LeBron 20 and at its higher starting price point, are these things really worth their price tag? Let's get into it. So the first and most obvious change from recent LeBron shoes is that these are a true low top, but the materials in the low top, I think are, are pretty interesting to look at. If you look at the outside, it is a really kind of macro level woven upper. Now these are all actual woven threads in here and it is double layer on the weave as well as three layers on the upper with the Nike Sphere under that. Now Nike Sphere is like a dry fit polyester material with little bumps of foam along the way and then actually little spheres. And so what that does is it decreases is the amount of surface area contact that your foot comes into with the uppers. So it allows like more drying, a little bit more wicking of sweat and moisture away from the skin, keeping you dry, but also kind of managing that kind of microclimate within the shoe. It's the same stuff you see in a lot of those type of waffle shirts, just on a kind of bulkier layer that can actually handle the stress of your foot. But one of my personal favorite parts of the uppers is how reinforced the lace line is. Not only here, the vamp or the mid part of your forefoot, then going up into the ankle collar, because this is a woven thread, they actually do of a metal stay around there so you're not kind of lacing through that weave and breaking down those fibers. So the lockdown here is really nice and it actually comes here under the ankle collar on the inside of the shoe. So when you tie them down, you're actually tying down the physical inside of the ankle collar, which does give this shoe just an incredible lockdown for a shoe that is a low top, better than a lot of mid tops even. And if you look at the upper durability test, the Dremel 10 seconds high grit sandpaper, I mean the Dremel does start to bite through that woven layer. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to rip right through it. It still is intact. However, if you are dragging or sliding on an outdoor court, you can kind of really forget it. Once you start dragging a bunch, these are going to start shredding. So just watch it. If you are on an outdoor hard court with these, try not to toe drag too much. But getting into the midsole teardown, this is where the LeBron 20 does something that I have not seen a basketball shoe do yet. Now, this is one of those shoes where the heel is actually a lower stack than in the arch. And we've seen that before in more budget model shoes because those shoes don't have a shank. So they make the arch a little bit more filled with foam so it feels like there's a little bit more stack in there, but then it just starts to wane. The stack starts to go down because there's no shank. Whereas in LeBron 20s, you get this really nice contoured midfoot here, but it also has the carbon fiber shank underneath of it protecting it. So you're getting a really soft, comfortable footbed of Cushlon, which it, even though it does feel like Cushlon for sure, it almost feels like cookie dough that's been in the freezer for a little while. That's kind of the consistency of it. So it is kind of a little bit more of a denser formulation of Cushlon, so a little bit more plush underfoot. Plus then you get the Zoom Turbo unit in the forefoot there. So all around the kind of engine of this shoe is just really meant for a lot of contour, a lot of comfort, and almost kind of a lot of customization there because this dense cushion will start to mold around your foot, but you do have the carbon fiber shank still under there holding you up. So, you know, this shoe almost acts like there's an over-the-counter orthotic in there. And so it's almost kind of somewhere between the Move Game Day and the Move Game Day Pro, the kind of support you'll get there. So in terms of a midsole, it's almost kind of bringing an over-the-counter orthotic to the table already for people that kind of like that feel. And if you look at it on the jump height test, 41 centimeters on average, not the bounciest shoe I've ever seen this year. And I think that's just because the Cushlon is a little bit more dense. The forefoot is a zoom turbo unit, which is more meant for ground feel, giving a lot of forgiveness to the forefoot, but being able to kind of feel the ground with all these undulations in there. So you get more of that kind of 3D contact. And, and I do like that for more of a ground assault, kind of a little bit more shifty footwork. However, in terms of bounce, even though these did get over 40 centimeters, they definitely don't feel super bouncy. They feel much more cushioned, much more kind of contouring to your foot. So if you're looking for a shoe that feels super bouncy, they're not the TR RC Blaze Court, they're not the GT Jump. Definitely a little bit of a different feel there. But getting into the outsole tread, this is almost something that looks like it's out of Guardians of the Galaxy. It's kind of a real non-traditional, kind of more of a digitally generated tread. And what this is really meant to do is be able to grab an organic surface like hardwood in really whatever direction you're trying to pivot or move. That's why whenever you're looking at a tread like this, and you see these real non-uniform shapes everywhere around there. It's because they're trying to pick up traction if you're kind of in an awkward position or only using one part of the shoe. So whereas if it's just one linear tread or even just herringbone, it's only going to grab where it's kind of 90 degrees or 45 degrees to the ground. Whereas on these, because it's non-uniform, it can grab in a lot of different directions. So that's why they use this. And it's also much better on an organic surface like hardwood versus an outdoor court. Now I did notice on these, the traction on them was pretty much better than anything I have tried this year. But if you look at the outsole durability test, the Dremel 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, I mean, almost two millimeters of damage 
on a two millimeter tread depth. The durometer was about 11.75. So more of a medium compound rubber. So even though when I had these on a dry outdoor court, as well as a slick outdoor court in the morning when they were still kind of dew on that paint, I had zero problems with grip whatsoever. Definitely the best gripping shoes of the year, like I just said. On indoor hardwood courts, I mean, like I said, better than anything I have tried in recent months for sure. It's just that if you're gonna use these, I probably would just stick to an indoor court with them just because you're gonna wear that tread down so quick. So for a shoe that is so expensive, um, the durability of the rubber is not there. However, the playability of the rubber certainly is. And just looking at the tread plus the midsole in action on the shuttle test, 14.52 seconds, which makes these one of the fastest basketball shoes I have ever tested on that. Now that comes down to number one, the traction on them, like I said, was just phenomenal. But number two, the up how much containment there is, how good the lockdown is, how kind of speedy they are being a more low top shoe. It really contributed, I think, to the speed as well as that lateral flange that's made out of all outsole rubber, plus the fact you kind of sink into that zoom turbo unit in the forefoot, plus all the cushion around it is just a little bit more moldable. So you get a lot better feel on the ground and you're able to take those turns just a little bit faster, maintain speed on the turns versus something like the jump height test or just trying to get off a jump shot. The more energy you put into it, usually the more you're gonna get back. But getting into the fit of the 20s, this is one area I wasn't all that impressed with. Uh, they are incredibly tapered, especially in the forefoot. They taper pretty hard. Uh, so if you are a 2E, I mean, you can try to go up a half size, but if you're any bit of a wide foot, especially Bunyan or Taylor's Bunyan, you're just gonna cramp in these. I had about three days worth of really bad cramping in these shoes and I'm just barely a 2E and in my standard size, I just could not get these to break in. Up a half size, you got a chance, I think, especially if you can maybe shove some lacrosse or tennis balls in there, um, but it is a pretty extended break-in because the uppers are so containing, because they are so many layers, and because they are just a little more constricting with the bulkier, thicker weave on them. But if you are someone that suffers from ball of foot pain, heel pain, or arch pain, they are a tremendous shoe. The amount of stack of air you get in the heel on these is phenomenal. It's like the LeBron 19 in the forefoot. It's just a huge stack of zoom air, plus a zoom turbo unit in the forefoot is so forgiving, plus all the offloading from that really soft, dense cushion in the midfoot with the carbon fiber underneath of there. It's just, if you're someone that's bringing ailments to the basketball court, especially on the bottom of your foot, there really isn't much better than this shoe. You just gotta watch out for if you're a wide foot as well. Uh, it's just gonna cram you in there pretty good. But getting into the all important playability of the LeBron 20s, uh, definitely the best low top basketball shoe I have tried in recent memory. Uh, it, basically, if you're looking for a low top basketball shoe that plays like a mid or a high, this is it. I mean, it's tremendous engineering. I, I think, you know, just for whoever designed this and for whoever was thinking about how I can make a low top play like a mid or a high, you know, that to me is, is worth a lot of accolades on this shoe because it does get that done. And um, I have just not seen that before. Now, they're not a super bouncy shoe. They're much more, like I said, a cushioned, kind of molded type feel shoe. They are tremendously nimble for what they are, tremendously containing. You can make incredibly violent movements in these. And yeah, you can get up for a jump shot in them. They're just not as bouncy as something like the TRC Blaze Court, the GT Jump, or even like the Curry Flow 9 or 10. They just don't have that in them. The shank isn't long enough. They are a little bit more bottom heavy with everything going on in the bottom of this shoe. However, if you're looking for grip, protection of your toes. I mean, all the layers of the uppers you get around your toes. So if you are a big center looking for a low top in the paint, nothing better than these. But I would say if you are someone that wants a low top shoe to play like a premium mid or a high top, like flagship type shoe, then yeah, they're worth the price point. If you don't need that, then I'd say they probably aren't. I'd say for me as a foot doctor and just shoe tech enthusiast, and I would say for me, yeah, these are definitely worth the price for a patient that needs them. Uh, but if you're not someone that needs them, I think you can probably find something for cheaper, even in the same Nike lineup. But of course, I'd love to hear your thoughts. I mean, more than anything, do you think it's a good idea for the LeBron line to start going lower in the ankle collar? And are you okay with them increasing the price point for more tech and more engineering in the shoe? Let me know down below. And if you wanna see the other sibling to the LeBron 20, the KD15 that just came out, make sure you click into this playlist up above and subscribe down below. Respect your rubber and foam. And yes, I am not in my studio right now. I'm actually at Cedar Point for the weekend with my family, but I got these in the mail and I wanted to get this video out. So that is why I'm sitting here at a picnic table by some Arborvitae trees and there's roller coasters going on behind me. So I'll see you in the next one.